Hi, everybody. <clears throat> I'm uh, Phil Menser. I'm in the uh, uh, Center for Complex Networks and Systems Research uh, within our school and also a member of the uh, Network Science Institute, which is a university-wide um, organization. And I uh, made the title um, interesting to attract you to this topic. <laughs> And this is one of the ways in which, in fact, we are being manipulated, um, click, clickbait. Uh, so uh, I'm interested in, uh, well, the whole lab and my team, uh, we're very interested in studying um, the spread and virality of misinformation. So in this plot here, you can see the probability distribution that a, a particular piece of uh, news will go viral. So on, on um, on the x-axis, you have the number of tweets that share a particular uh, link to a piece of uh, news or an article. And you can see that some things can go up to tens of thousands of shares. Uh, this is on Twitter, so that's normal. But the two curves, one is for claims from low credibility sources, mostly junk, misinformation, fake science, fake news, and so on. And the other one is actually uh, articles from uh, credible sources and so the scary thing is that those two distributions look very very similar so junk is kind of just as likely to go viral as high uh, news from high credibility sources so this is a broad distribution it spans many orders of magnitude so let's pick one example of one piece of uh, fake news that is from the tail of this distribution. This is an article that was shared over 30,000 times on Twitter. It claimed that um, the Clinton campaign was involved in satanic rituals. It went viral just before the elections and it was shared by a lot of people. What we see here, this big uh, pretty picture here is what we call a diffusion network where the nodes represent Twitter accounts and connections between them represent how that particular article, just that, was spread from one person to another. This network is just for that one article. The size of the, a node represents how influential that account was in being retweeted by other accounts just in the context of this one article. So of course we recognize that there are some nodes that are very influential. These are like the source, Infowars, uh, and uh, other accounts that are associated with it. But we also see that there are a lot of um, nodes a little bit here on the periphery that are also influential and they're colored in red and uh, the color there represents the fact that we believe that those are bots so this is one way in which bots can be used to amplify misinformation they can inject uh, the message and they can sort of make sure that many many people see it so i'll come back to that later uh, of course there are many different things about social media that make us vulnerable uh, this is the cover of uh, Science a few weeks ago where there was an article, well, there were two articles about the spread of misinformation online and, um, and uh, one was, uh, I, I was one of the co-authors and we basically were arguing that scientists from different disciplines and industries should work together to try and address this problem. And if you've been watching TV, actually, uh, Mark Zuckerberg actually mentioned that they have such an initiative and we're happy to be involved in that and hopefully we'll have access to data to study this phenomenon. But there are many, many, many factors that make us vulnerable. So political and economic incentives, uh, people have, uh, can make money through ads, um, the fractures and polarized media landscape, which make people more likely to believe things that are not from mainstream sources, uh, the lack of literacy, uh, limited attention, and information overload that makes us use some heuristics, for example, pay attention to things that we think other people are interested in, social biases, other cognitive biases like selection exposure, algorithmic biases like uh, prioritizing things that seem to be engaging or popular, and finally social bots. So I just have a minute left. I'll tell you a little bit more about what we're doing with social bots. So Botometer is a platform that we develop that anybody can use to look at an account on Twitter and see how likely it is to be automated. It's a very popular. Um, Hoax is another tool that we have where you can track a piece of news, whether it's from a normal source or from a uh, low credibility source, and you can see how it spreads and also how the fact checking spreads. So here the yellow links are um, fact checking related to a piece of fake news, which are the gray uh, part of the network. This was fake news about uh, three million illegal aliens having voted in the elections, um, which of course was not true, but um, 
um, it became, it, it, has, it is now believed by many people. Um, just, just, uh, uh, just a couple more slides to wrap up. So uh, this is a, <laughs> sorry, I, uh, I beg your pardon. So this is a, a, a big, big network that represents uh, people on Twitter who are sharing uh, links to misinformation sources or connected uh, fact-checking sources. You could see that there's a lot more people sharing fake news. Some of these people are also sharing things, fact-checking things in orange, but if you look at it, mostly what they're doing is that they are attacking fact-checking sources and trying to say that they are uh, not, not credible or they are uh, using them in deceiving ways by, uh, by claiming that the fact-checkers are saying things that they're not really saying. And the last slide, uh, I, I wanna show you two ways in which bots can actually manipulate. The, one, the top left plot shows that bots can be very active in the very, very first few seconds, like in the first 10 seconds after a piece of fake news is posted. And so that's how they can sort of amplify it. And the, the chart on the bottom shows you that bots can mention or reply to very, very popular people to try to get them to pay attention. So here's the example that I showed you before of the three million fake votes. And the red edges represent uh, a, a bots that were mentioning a popular accounts such as you know, Barack Obama, YouTube, CNN, so popular news sources, but also real Donald Trump. And so a few days later, of course, Donald Trump made a statement indicating that he believed that this was true. So these are ways in which we all, even the most influential among us, can be manipulated. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much. And sorry I went over time.